Thank you. Uh, and first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Sophie on Bioscience uh, for inviting me to this fascinating symposium. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. And today my talk is uh, getting modulation via voltage sensor, uh, voltage sensing domains in voltage gated potassium channels. So the physiological functions of uh, voltage gated potassium channels is uh, relatively very well known, uh, which is important for repolarization of action potentials. And this is the ventricular myocyte action potential, and uh, there are many ion channels are involved for shaping a uh, action potential. But at least the uh, uh, three types of voltage gated potassium channels are known to be involved: uh, KV4 or HARC, and also KCNQ1. And voltage gated potassium channels also uh, have some roles in non-excitable cells. Uh, in this example, uh, KCNQ1, KCN3 complex uh, helps the glide transport by uh, recycling in potassium in epithelial cells. So this is the molecular structure of voltage gated potassium channels. Uh, so it has uh, six transmembrane membrane segments and uh, S4 seg fourth segment or S4 segment uh, have, has uh, several positively charged amino acid residues. That's why it can sense the membrane potential or depolarization. And that's why the first four uh, segments, S1, S2, S3, S4, uh, they are uh, for what they're sensing domains and the uh, rest of the two segments, S5, S6, uh, for, uh, pore, they form pore domain. And because this is, this is alpha subunit, and because alpha, four alpha subunits can form a single ion channel, uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, it has single pore domain and four independent uh, voltage sensing domain. So because the uh, S4 segment uh, has several charged uh, amino acid residues and they form a uh, salt bridge uh, with the negatively charged amino acids on uh, S2 or S1. So that's why they make a, uh, both uh, salt bridges and then they have to change the pair of salt bridges. So that's why the S4 moves upward when uh, the membrane potential is depolarized by uh, step by step as shown in this movie uh, by David Schultz group. So so therefore, uh, uh, this is a very simple gating model of both desegated potassium channels. And of course, there is a closed state, and this is the free open state. But because of this step-by-step uh, -step, uh, movement of S4 segment, there should be some intermediate states uh, between closed state and open state. And, and, and also, uh, it depends on, uh, I mean, uh, in this intermediate state uh, can be closed state or open state uh, depending, on the, uh, with, uh, depending on the channel. So, uh, thanks to the recent uh, advancement of uh, cryo-EM structural biology, we now have a lot of uh, uh, voltage gated potassium channel complex. And this is one of the example, uh, BK channel or so on with a beta 4 subunit. Uh, so the beta 4 subunit, uh, which is colored in blue, uh, binds to the pore domain or S6 and also on, uh, simultaneously binds to the S1 or S0. Uh, so it uh, binds to the voltage sensing domain. And this is the KB4.2 uh, complex. This is uh, done by, uh, 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 this is done by uh, Kisei and Kasia. Kasia is our, collab uh, our uh, lab member, and this is the work, uh, uh, the, the collaboration with the uh, uh, Nureki lab of Tokyo, University, University of Tokyo. So in this case, uh, KB4 uh, has two kinds of uh, auxiliary subunits. Uh, one is a K chip, intracellular proteins, and another one is DPP. And as you can see here, uh, DPP is a, a single transmembrane protein, although it has very large extracellular side, but it 
there is a single transmembrane uh, domain, and, and we found that this DDB6 also uh, binds to the S1 and S2 segments. The, and the final example is the case in the Q1 and the case in E3. Uh, this is the structure uh, reported by uh, uh, Makino's group. And, and this red helix is the case in E3 protein. And also, you can see that case in E3 binds to the pore domain and also uh, body sensing domain. So all these auxiliary subunits uh, probably uh, affect the voltage sensor movement because they directly bind to the voltage sensing domain. But uh, we don't know how they can, uh, if they can make, uh, uh, they can modulate the current or channel property. Uh, we don't know how they can change the voltage sensor movement or gating property. So today I'm going to talk about this uh, channel complex, KCN Q1 and KCN E3, uh, and, and I'm going to discuss, uh, I, will try, uh, I will discuss how uh, KCN E3 uh, changed the gating property of this channel. So actually, uh, KCN Q1 uh, is a, a great model for investigating uh, voltage, uh, I mean, modulation uh, via voltage sensor because a case in a Cuba uh, can form a tetramer and produce a voltage dependent current as shown here. But uh, it, with core expression of auxiliary subunit uh, case in A1, which, uh, which again, a uh, single transmembrane protein, uh, this protein can change the gating of case in a Q1 dramatically. So by co-expression with uh, case in E1, case in Q1 current becomes, I mean, kinetics of uh, activation kinetics uh, becomes much slower. And also deactivation becomes also slower. And also uh, GV curve or activation curve uh, shifts towards, uh, to, towards the positive direction. Meaning that uh, this case in E1 makes the case in Q1 channel uh, harder to be activated uh, by uh, depolarization. And then this is another member of uh, case in E family, case in E3. Uh, this, is also in, uh, this is also interesting because uh, co expression of case in Q1 and case in E3 makes the current like this uh, constitutively active. Uh, almost voltage insensitive current. And activation curve looks like this. So even at minus 100 millivolt, uh, still most of the channel is in, in an open state. And then uh, there's some uh, uh, voltage ground uh, there's some studies using voltage ground to, to, uh, to understand uh, how the, these KCNE proteins uh, change the uh, uh, voltage sensor movement. Uh, this is one of them, and this, in this case, uh, this is the uh, voltage ground photometry of, uh, on KCN Q1, KCN E1 channel. Uh, this is from uh, uh, Peter Larson's group of my uh, University of Miami, and what they found is uh, co-expression of KCN E1 actually splits the uh, uh, getting uh, sorry, uh, FT curve into two components, F1 and F2. So it's a bit more complicated than probably uh, we expected. And this is all, uh, another case, a uh, case in Q1 and case in E3. Uh, this is uh, by uh, Bantler Build Group and also uh, 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 Professor, Professor Tsui of Washington University. Uh, so again, uh, the FV curve splits into two components, F1 and F2. So although the, the current looks very different, but the voltage sensor uh, modulation seems to be uh, a bit similar. So, uh, so probably uh, case in E1 or, and case in E3 uh, favor the intermediate state uh, by just changing the uh, uh, equilibrium of voltage sensor movement into F1 and F2. And because uh, case in E1 uh, somehow uh, suppress the intermediate states, that's why uh, uh, 
in this case, uh, F2 uh, corresponds to the opening of this channel. So that's why the current looks like this. Uh, on the other hand, the case in the Q1, case in the K3 case, uh, probably uh, because the intermediate state remain open. So that's why uh, uh, this current uh, looks like a uh, uh, constitutively open, even though it can be closed at like minus 200 millivolts. So the question is uh, how then does the case in E1 or case in E3 favor the intermediate state? Uh, before going to uh, this uh, question, I would like to introduce some uh, brief history of myself. Uh, this is almost two decades ago. Uh, this animal, very cool animal, uh, marine invertebrate, uh, Siona intestinalis, its genome had just uh, had, uh, published. And then uh, some Jap uh, Japanese uh, uh, ion channel researchers uh, try to uh, make catalog. This is this project is led by uh, was led by uh, Professor Okamura, and so we try to make a, a catalog of ion channels of Seona intestinalis. And I also contributed some. And uh, well, well, what we found is uh, we found uh, it has KCNQ genes, uh, two KCNQ genes. One is KCNQ1. And one, another one is, uh, you know, less of it, less of the case in the Q, two to five, ancestor of two to five. And also we found that case, there, the, it, had, it has no case in E gene. So that's very interesting. So I, we hypothesize that ca the human, I'm oh, sorry, Siona case in the Q1 uh, might lose uh, the binding site for case in E proteins or just hot spots for modulation uh, that's our initial hypothesis. So we compared the amino acid sequences between Siona case in the Q1, the human case in the Q1, and uh, there's some difference uh, in, uh, in S1 or S6, but uh, in the end, we've identified uh, this uh, phenylalanine 127, which is valine in Siona is uh, pro uh, important for uh, case in modulation. And we also identified uh, uh, F130 is also uh, required for modulation. So that was, uh, yeah, uh, 10, almost more than 10 years ago, we published a paper in JGP. And then after 10 years, uh, I mean 10 years later, uh, the complex of case in Q1 and the case in E3 uh, came out, and then uh, case in E3, I mean, this, yeah, red case in E3, uh, clearly uh, binds to the S1 segment in this structural model. Uh, so, uh, and also uh, F127 and uh, F127 and 130 are also included in this interaction phase. So, uh, then we, so uh, by looking at this structure, uh, we decided to evaluate the functional impact of the interaction for the case in history modulation. So what we did is uh, uh, volume scanning. Uh, this is the example of uh, this F127 uh, Y type uh, facing uh, the case in history and we mutated this phenylalanine into uh, various amino acids with uh, different sizes, from the smallest alanine to the largest tryptophan, and then evaluate the constitutive activity uh, uh, with uh, casein 3 So these are the representative currents, uh, F127A, V, L, W, and this is uh, without casein 3 and right side is they are. Uh, with case in E3. So then we made the activation curve and evaluated the constitutive activity by taking uh, the conductance at minus 100 millivolt. For example, wild type, the conductance at minus 100 millivolt is pretty, pretty high, like 0 
But in this case, uh, F127A uh, constitutive activity is much smaller. And then, you know, V, uh, uh, Valin, Loisin, tryptophan, and then we plot uh, this constitutive activity against the size of the amino acid residue, like this. So, uh, we, so then we found that it's very interesting because the, the, you can see the bell-shaped curve indicating the, there is a size dependence. And black bar indicates this is white type, so the white type is the best. And you know, the more defined the size is, and then the, the constitutive activity becomes uh, weak or smaller. So uh, yeah, there's a size dependence. And then, yeah, this is done by uh, Dr. Cassia. Uh, he, he did uh, this uh, work. And so then he, or we, uh, surveyed all S1 segments uh, facing S S uh, casein 3 And again, uh, basically, uh, all of them, bas uh, basically, virtually all of them showed the kind of uh, uh, bell-shaped curve or size dependence. And the black bars are all wild type. So wild type is always the best. But, and then there is a size dependence. We can see the size, you can see the size dependence here. And then, uh, next, uh, he also tried uh, the, the other side, KCN3. They made, he made a lot of mutations. This is actually very, you know, tremend, tremend, tremendous work by him. And, uh, he made a, uh, and then again, we found that almost all of them showed the kind of signs dependency. And also uh, black bars, I mean, wild type, are always the best. So we concluded that this is the interaction between S1 and casein E3 is pretty much well optimized for the proper uh, modulation. I mean, the, for the constitutive activity. So then, so, so by binding the, so the casein E3 binds to the S1 segment and that makes the channel, I mean, become, so the channel, casein Q1 favors the intermediate state. Uh, yeah, like this. So the next question is, is it, is it also the case for uh, casein E1? Does casein E1 similarly interact with S1 to favor the intermediate state? That's the next question. So then again, he uh, examined the S1. You know, we have already a set of uh, S1 segment mutant series. So he examined again with the casein E1. And because casein E1 shifts the voltage, I mean, GV curve to the positive direction, we evaluated the shift uh, with casein E1. And lower part of the S1, F127 and 130, all mutants, almost all mutants, show the, uh, I mean, he enhanced the shift to the positive direction. And still, uh, they show kind of uh, inverted bell-shaped curve indicating that this, there is a size dependency. And, and we uh, concluded that because mutation induces a larger GV shift, indicating they may be important for favoring open state, fully open state. Again, we examined uh, 134, 138, and 142. And very interestingly, all of them showed the smallest GV shift uh, with case in E1. And again, there's some uh, size dependence like this. So in this case, or I mean, these amino acid residues for these amino acid residues uh, or mutation induced a smaller GV shift, meaning they are important for favoring intermediate closed state. So this is our current model. Uh, case in E3 binds to the S1 tightly and, and probably stabilized intermediate open state. But in the case of case in E1, uh, upper part is more important for the intermediate closed state but the lower part may be important for the open state. Okay, maybe almost time, I guess. So I'd like to thank uh, Professor Kubo 
and uh, Kubola members of National Institute of Physiological Sciences, uh, where I started uh, KCNQ1 studies. And I also thank uh, my current lab members of Jichi Medical University. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for wonderful work and the very beautiful data. So now open for discussion. So, okay. Yeah, came from Korea. Uh, very interesting data. And what about the effect of mutating those residues in terms of the kinetics of activation? Uh, yeah. Was it also affected? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, that's a very yeah, good question, but I, yeah. Yeah, I need to look at them, but um, there should be a difference, uh, but I, we are just uh, only uh, concentrating on the uh, GV curve, so I mean the activation curve, so maybe I will uh, we'll check the, how the activation kinetics are different. different. Thank you. Um, Gerd Thiel, University of Darmstadt, Germany. Uh, when you plot the uh, activity in terms of uh, against the volume, uh, they are equally spaced, your bars. So you didn't put real numbers for the volume. You just created them uh, small to large, or did you really calculate the molecular volume of the side chain and plotted the data yeah, um, as a function of the real numbers or just the relative numbers? Thank you very much. Um, we just uh, uh, put, yeah. You just group them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's it's not very you know like uh, yeah. We we know the volume. Uh, this is from the other literature. So it's not very you know precise uh, graph, but uh, we just put them into from the small amino acid to large amino acid. So that's very simple. <laughs> yeah. Analysis. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other question and comments? Nobody there? So I have one question. So I'm curious about the time course of the intermediate state and open state and closed state. So how do you think about that? You mean the uh, activation? Yes. Yeah, um, so, so probably, uh, so this is IKS current and mm -hmm. it has very slow mm -hmm. uh, kinetics. Mm -hmm. It's because, of, because uh, the at this con uh, transition, mm -hmm. F2 transition from intermediate to open state requires higher uh, voltage mm -hmm. or membrane potential. That's why uh, the kinetics looks very slow. slow. Yeah. So actually, uh, it is much slower than the uh, case in Q1 itself. But this is uh, probably due to the, so this is, you know, like the, uh, we have, it, this is just my kind of, Simple drawing, so it's not very accurate. By but your hand? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's not just, uh, you know. But uh, the V half should be, you know, very, you know, high, like perhaps, I don't know, I don't remember, but, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why the kinetics is very uh, slow, okay. becomes very slow. Thank you. Okay, so the, that is a second order, right? Second? Second, second order. So second. long ah. time, you mean the. Yeah, yeah second order. Uh, yeah, I mean. Not millisecond, no microsecond. Ah, uh, you mean the kinetics? Yeah. Uh, activation yep. kinetics? Yep. Yeah, so of course you can apply a higher voltage to mm -hmm. facilitate it. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, basically this activation kinetics is very, very slow, uh, okay. you, as you can see here. Yeah. And then and at least in Xenopus all sites, uh -huh. it requires several tens of seconds to reach the plateau. Yeah. So. So I'm just com confused, the molecular structure, right? The yeah. molecular structure's time course is microsecond. Ah, okay. And then channels activation and open close time course is totally different from yeah, um, microsecond and second. Okay, so the, of course the transition from one state to the other state is, should be very quick, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. microsecond yep, or maybe yep. faster. I don't know, but it, this is you know kind of equilibrium, and you know from the intermediate state to uh, yeah. open state, or yeah. so so that time constant cannot compare that you know protein structure. I mean confirmation, confirmation change. Okay, thank you very much. I, thank I you. completely understood. Okay, um, do you have any question and comments? Anyone else? 
Okay, now it's time to next speaker. So thank you very much for Dr. Nakajo. Thank you. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much.